Prior to the 20th century, the science of physics described, very successfully, the physical universe as it was perceived through everyday human experience. People noticed that what goes up usually comes back down, and they eventually measured how quickly the turnaround occurs. In 1687, Isaac Newton put this working understanding of everyday reality into mathematical form in his book Philosophiae Naturales Principia Mathematica. The title is Latin for Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy. The laws Newton formulated were so powerful that they could be used to accurately calculate the orbits of the moon and faraway planets. But around 1900, this neat and comfortable worldview was shaken. Scientists discovered that, underlying Newton's everyday picture, is a different reality, the deeper truth we now call quantum theory and relativity. Scientists form theories of the physical world. We all, as social beings, form personal theories of our social world. These theories are part of the adventure of participating in human society. They cause us to interpret the behavior of others, to predict their actions, to make guesses about how to get what we want from them, and to decide, ultimately, on how we feel toward them. Do we trust them with our money, our health, our cars, our careers, our children, or our hearts? As was true in the physical world, in the social universe, too, there is a very different reality underlying the one we naively experience. The revolution in physics occurred when, in the 19th and early 20th centuries, New technologies expose the exotic behavior of atoms and newly discovered subatomic particles, like the photon and electron. Analogously, the new technologies of neuroscience are today enabling scientists to expose a deeper mental reality, a reality that for all of prior human history has been hidden from view. The science of the mind has been remade by one new technology in particular. Functional Magnetic Resonance Imaging, or fMRI, emerged in the 1990s. It is related to the ordinary MRI that your doctor employs, except fMRI maps the activity of the brain's different structures by detecting the blood flow that waxes and wanes just slightly as that activity varies. In this way, fMRI offers three-dimensional pictures of the working brain, inside and out, mapping to a resolution of about a millimeter the level of activity throughout the organ. To get an idea of what fMRI can do, consider this. Scientists can now use data collected from your brain to reconstruct an image of what you are looking at. In one study, a subject was asked to gaze at a series of images. A reconstruction was then created from the fMRI's electromagnetic readings of the subject's brain activity without any reference to the actual image. This was accomplished by combining data from areas of the brain that respond to particular regions in a person's field of vision, together with data from other parts of the brain that respond to different themes. A computer then sorted through a database of six million images and picked the one that best corresponded to those readings. In each case, the actual image a subject was gazing at and the computer's reconstruction were remarkably similar. The result of applications like this has been an upheaval as radical as that of the quantum revolution, a new understanding of how the brain operates and who we are as human beings. This revolution has a name, or at least the new field that it spawned has one. It is called social neuroscience. The first official meeting ever devoted to that field took place in April 2001. Carl Jung believed that to learn about the human experience, it was important to study dreams and mythology. History is the story of events that played out in civilization. But dreams and myths are expressions of the human heart. The themes and archetypes of our dreams and myths, Jung pointed out, transcend time and culture. They arise from unconscious instincts that governed our behavior long before civilization papered over and obscured them, and they therefore teach us about what it means to be human on the deepest level. Today, as we piece together how the brain works, we are able to study human instincts directly, to see their physiological origins within the brain. It is by uncovering the workings of the unconscious that we can best understand both how we are related to other species and what makes us uniquely human. The upcoming chapters are an exploration of our evolutionary heritage, of the surprising and exotic forces at play beneath the surface of our own minds, and of the impact of those unconscious instincts 
on what is usually considered willed rational behavior, an impact that is much more powerful than we have previously believed it to be. If you really want to understand the social world, if you really want to understand yourself and others, and beyond that, if you really want to overcome many of the obstacles that prevent you from living your fullest, richest life, you need to understand the influence of the subliminal world that is hidden within each of us.